popular country file, and Wainwright Walks, which sees her follow in the footsteps of renowned fell walker, writer and illustrator Alfred Rain Wainwright. Her series takes us through the countryside of northwest England, using the books he meticulously wrote and illustrated to guide her through the rugged landscapes of the Lake District. Ladies and gentlemen, Julia Bradbury. <laughs> Moment, I realise how difficult it can be said to say Wainwright's Walks. Wainwright's Walks, yeah, it's a bit of a isn't it? <laughs> but they are fabulous. I remember starting to buy them. I lived in York, born and brought up in Yorkshire. Yep. And Alfred Wainwright, who was borough treasurer in Kendall, wasn't he, in That's his right. spare time, he did these meticulously illustrated, handwritten text on all of them and hand drawn mountain scarf and all those. And I collected them over the years, and the coast goes, well, I've never done them all. I've done some, but not all. He was absolutely a man obsessed because he wasn't born in the Lake District. A lot of people think that he was, but he was a, a relatively late visitor. He went there when he was 22 was for the first time. He was born in Blackburn and he was um, instrumental in setting up the Blackburn Rovers Football Club as Good well. Lord, I didn't know that. So he went at 22, fell in love with the place, and decided that he would um, dedicate himself to this project of creating these amazing pictorial mm. guides, which he did lovingly over 13 years. Is. Mm. Typical accountant. He planned it and he finished a week early. <laughs> oh, classic. How wonderful. Yeah. He was a famously taciturn man. He, he was, curmudgeonly is a word that often comes up when you talk about Mr Wainwright. Uh, he walked in tweeds initially. He had the beard. He had the lamb chops as well. And the pipe. And the, yep, the pipe as well. And um, he liked to walk alone, famously. He didn't like crowds. And he really enjoyed the solitude of mm. the lakes, the mountains, the valleys. I think that could have been a little to do with his first marriage, which apparently wasn't happiest. So he spent quite a lot of time, you know, on a, on escape, as it were. Um, but but the, the love that, that grew over the years was a, just this genuine, enduring passion. Mm. And the, the books are little works of art. They really are. And you've are. got your own version now. When, have they changed much? There are little changes in rights of way, presumably. Well, this, I would not even begin to think that, that this is a, a Wainwright book in, in any way. What happened is um, I made a series several years ago now following in his footsteps yeah. using these great guides. And uh, I did... 10 walks and these are those 10 walks which seem to have endured people have really enjoyed them mm. and they you know they keep playing them on a loop um, on, on you know on the BBC and they're repeated well, on, on several nice. channels so really the book now has come several years late because of the enduring passion and because mm. of, of a demand for people so this really is my guide to the lakes if you haven't been it's a pretty good beginner's guide to 10 really good walks a good what would you start of folk off on then if you say a beginner's walk if you well, like well, I, you, I, tell you, I think you need to be careful. There are, there are 214 fells that Wainwright covered. I haven't got anywhere close to finishing all of those. I don't know where you're at on oh, the, uh, like on the fell Single bagging figures, front really. yet. Uh, but, but a couple of good ones. Cat Bells is famously uh, a very uh, a gentle walk, and it was one that Wainwright said that, that families and grandparents could take mm. part in as well. Um, and Cat Bells is a, is a very lovely, beautiful walk that, that takes in a lot of Beatrix Potter countryside. Helvellyn is spectacular, too. Helvellyn is spectacular. spectacular. Probably you need to be into medium medium to serious walking to do Helvellyn. Striding Edge is quite a, a good tackling point yeah. um, on Helvellyn and uh, that you, you also have to uh, face the elements quite a lot. <laughs> I've never been at the summit of Helvellyn and not been rained on like that. Oh. <laughs> I have yet to do it. I did walk up Great Gable with my old Labrador, Lou. Yeah. It was a yellow Labrador. I'm so pleased you said your Labrador then. I thought you were saying my old wife. <laughs> no, my old, <laughs> my old Labrador. And we got to the top and it's quite rocky and she couldn't get purchased with her claws. No. So I had to carry her the last bit, a, a big Labrador, carrying her up not great Not ideal. Not, not, the... not my walking tip for no, you, Alan. We got to the top and she then started demolishing people's picnics, which was hugely embarrassing, <laughs> straight in. So. Yes, if there were a couple of a couple of tips, so, you know, for beginners, one of them would be don't carry your Labrador up a steep yeah, mountain keep side. It on, keep it on the lead when you get to the yes, top of the picnic. that would be the next for one. For you, your favourite, then, your own personal one, I mean. I really enjoy, there's a little, uh, a tiny summit called Castle Crag, and it's not a difficult walk. It only takes a couple of hours to do, which is very rare for a Lake District walk. Normally, you need to set aside at least a day, maybe two in some instances. Castle, um, Castle Crag is beautiful. just this beautiful... Look at it. It's a magical summit. It's very Lord of the Rings.
Springs. Mm. Um, very green, lush and enchanting up there. And you, you, you uh, pass through woodland to get to it. You can see some people camp at the bottom as well. Yes. There's a stream and a river to cross. So I think it's quite a romantic, beautiful little walk. But, you know, with a lot of these TV programmes, you're being followed by a crew. Do you ever get to walk alone? Or is it Julia Bradbury, you'll never walk alone? Well, yeah. do <laughs> any of us ever really get to walk alone? The, the thing about walking is that very often you'll find yourself at the top of a summit in what is... Uh, can be an intimate moment yeah. uh, and, and a very personal moment, but you could be standing next to a stranger and you're sharing that moment together very often. The two of you, or maybe three, maybe a few more, are looking out upon that view. Um, and that happens all the time, wh whoever you are, wherever you are, whether you've got camera crew or not. So um, I think that's what's special about walking, is you, you never really know where you're going to end up and who you're going to end up there with. A few quick tips on comfort. Good pair of boots, but break them in. Break your boots in. Yes, a lot of people think, really good idea. I'm going on my, my first big walking weekend anywhere. It could be, you know, the Peak District, the Yorkshire Moors, the Lake District, and they buy themselves a brand new pair of boots. And they are the boots that they take for the very first three or four days. I can tell you, I was talking to one of your um, ladies in makeup a little bit earlier, and uh, she said that uh, that's exactly what her husband did blisters on day one, and then that's it. You're, you're stuffed for the so rest of the So wear them weekend. around the house. Wear them around the house. <laughs> or wear them on the treadmill if you like the gym. Gym. Try them on the treadmill, mm. that works. And a good pair of socks. Good pair of socks. Good fitting socks, because sometimes what happens is your, your socks will slip mm. inside the boot and that creates another friction if mm. they're not the right kind of socks and then you're in trouble. Don't wear shoes like these. No. No. Do not go up Hell Valley no. in a pair Do not. of Julia Bradbury's heels. No. Like well, you can, wedges. but no. it's going to be an interesting walk. It's, a, <laughs> it's right up there with carrying a Labrador. Well, the book Julia Bradbury's Wainwright Walks will be released on the 1st of November. My thanks to Julia Bradbury. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely part of the world, the lakes, lovely to